Bang! Knees and knives. I'm Jared. My lovely wife Kara is busy. And today we are doing a long term update on the WorkSharp Adjustable Precision Guided System. Now, I do have a, a full sharpening on this already. So, if you want to watch that, you can go and check that video out. This is just a long term update. We're going to talk about how it's holding up, how the stones are holding up, some of the problems that come with it, and some of the benefits. So, <clears throat> One, this is a very easy system to use. It's incredibly easy to use. But, you know, it, it's not a very expensive, you know, item either. It, it's, you know, runs around, around $50, $60, which is, this is incredible value. So, I, I want to say right off the bat, I do like this system. And I do think this system is great for many, many people. Now, it does have its downfalls, though. So, one of the downfalls is... Um, and I've reprofiled, so let me just, let me rewind really quick. I've reprofiled a bunch of knives on it. I wanted to see how long the stones were going to last, how they were going to hold up. In my previous video, I said that the 600 didn't quite feel like a 600. It felt like a higher grip than that. Yet I wanted a different, uh, I would, I would have liked to have a stone in between the 600 and the ceramic because I didn't feel like the ceramic it wasn't able to get out all the scratches without a long, long time. You have to spend a lot of time on the ceramic stone to get it to to be polished, basically. I'm sure some steels, it would work easier, like CPM 154, you know, and other steels that polish very easily. But some most steels, it's very difficult to get all the scratches out. Now, another problem is, is that especially with little blades so if the smaller the blade is this way at certain angles you will start hitting this spot right there and if you look you can see where mine has been hit in some areas you can really see it right there you can see the scratches on the clamp now another thing is that this right here you see that little bit of movement? Now, that little bit of movement makes it to where it's kind of difficult to get out some of the scratches because, you know, if you don't put the exact same amount of pressure through the entire thing, that little bit of movement changes angles just slightly to where you get um, a finish that is splotchy. Let's just say that splotchy finish. Now the knife is still incredibly sharp. The knife will work just fine. And to most people, it's an incredible edge. Now, if you're a perfectionist, then it might be a little ugly for you. And you're going to want to be very delicate with your sharpening. Then you also have this. Let's look at this. You might not be able to see it that good, but there's a little bit of movement let me just take this out right here. See that? How? So that little bit of movement also does the same thing. So you have two things working against you. Now, the clamp holds on very tight for a very long time. You do want to check it every once in a while. The angle is it does stay at a good angle um the whole time you don't have to worry about the angle changing on you when it comes to the geared angle right here you can turn it right here this goes up and down and it changes your angle but so that works really good this magnet seems to hold pretty tight so in a lot of ways it's a very very a very good system and it works incredibly well flipping it you know to change your you know change sides that works very well um, the clamp, the clamp has rubber on the inside, so it doesn't scratch the blade. There's lots of great things. You do have to hang on to the base, though, because you will tip this thing trying to sharpen. So you do want to do this. And I also find myself sometimes pinching it like this and putting my finger underneath the clamp and holding it up just to stop that. So it basically tries to help that a little bit when I'm sharpening. Now... Um, this is a knife I did reprofile that I have sitting right here and it came out pretty good, but you see how it is a little splotchy, the choil area that was already done. So don't, don't look at that. Just look at the actual edge. Um, 
and then the edge is laid back it is very sharp so you know it, it does work very well to get you know a good sharp edge but you know there are some little minor issues that you do have to deal with now the sh the stones itself now honestly i did think that they weren't going to last as long as they have i've done a few reprofilings on 20 cv which is you know incredibly hard steel especially on stones or it can be um i've done d2 a couple times and I've done probably four or five reprofilings, meaning the I had I laid back the angle and or the angle was really bad. Like even this one to start off with, one side was was a big bevel and then the other side was a small bevel on this uh, bench made right here. So reprofiling it, I had to lay the edge back. I had to remove quite a bit of steel, you know, so on and so forth. So it was pretty hard on the stones. Now, the stones have held up pretty good. Now, I will say this 600, like I said, it feels finer than a 600. It feels more like a 1,000 grit, maybe a 1,200. Let me show you one of my other 600 grits really quick that I've used a lot. Now, here's a 600 grit stone that I've used way more than I've used that. And you can see it even looks a lot coarser. Now, here's another one that I've used about the same amount. And these are very cheap stones um, that you can pick up on Amazon. Even the other ones are pretty cheap. You can get the three set of these down in the description for about 50 bucks. A 300, a 600, and a 1200 grit ultra sharp now this 600 grit um these things are pretty cheap too but you see it, it's a little bit coarser than this 600 now let me show you a 1200 grit this is a 1200 grit that i've used quite a bit you can see the wear and tear on it you know um, and this is washed, so this is freshly cleaned, and you can see my swipes. Now, they kind of resemble each other. They're really close, so I feel like this is maybe not quite a 1200, but it is very close to it. Even just feeling the surface right now, they feel just, a, this, just alike. But when I grab the 600 grit and I rub it, this feels coarser. So, you know, I do think it is closer to a uh, 1,000 grit, um, this 600. Now, maybe it's from reprofiling. I said that right off the bat, though, when I first got it, that I thought it felt, you know, a little bit higher grit. Now, I'm not knocking it. I, I don't want anybody to take that like that. I'm just, you know, doing what I think is an assessment of it, you know. It, um, it does still work, though. And it works rather good still. Um, so, but going to the ceramic, the ceramic just doesn't seem to get the scratches out. Not without a certain type of steel or putting in a lot of time. A lot of time. So, I, I wish that they, there was one other stone. Like, maybe this was a four-way stone. I did hear, though, that they are going to come out with other attachments, which will be great. Now, ease of use, incredibly easy to use. This thing is so easy to use. And I like that. I like that a lot. Um, but the biggest problem I think I have, I do think the stones will, I don't know if they'll wear out fast, but they are little stones. They're not big stones, you know. So they're not going to last as long as one of my plates or even as long as one of these. Of course not, you know. Look at the size difference. I mean, of course it's not going to. But for what it's worth, they're going to work and they're going to last longer than the price. The price you know, being around 50, 60 bucks, you're going to get your money's worth out of it. For sure, 100%. But this movement is my biggest issue with it. Is this little bit of movement, because even with a bigger blade, but especially with a smaller blade. I mean, like I said, you do sometimes rub that, you know, just depending on your angle. Um, you could always raise your angle up, though, so that's not that big of a deal, you know, by you know, spinning this, this knob right here. 
by spinning this knob you can raise your angle up and then you won't have to worry about rubbing this thing this plate right here but the pressure thing and you can do the thing where you hold it the back right here and then put your thumb underneath and kind of like hold it like this to stop this from going up and down a little bit and it's so small but that little bit of movement is a couple degrees difference so what happens is the edge is blotchy we will take a look at this edge really quick that is also very cool you can pop that out i've been spent i've spent quite a bit of time on this and you can see how blotchy it is now it's not finished by no means so don't don't critique it thinking it's finished but you see the blotchiness of the edge and that is because it's you know moving it's that little bit of movement so now what i have to do is i have to make sure i put no pressure no pressure maybe hold it like this with my thumb underneath it and go very lightly and you want to do that with both stones starting with the 300 grit then to the 600 grit and using the same amount of pressure but no matter what you're still getting this there's nothing you can do about that rocking that little bit and i'm not worried about the rocking side to side i'm talking about the up and down see that that little bit is what what will do that to you no matter what now you just got to be as careful as possible but it can get annoying if you're a perfectionist which i am when it comes to edges so I just want to make that clear right now. I am a perfectionist when it comes to edges. So, or at least I try to be. But you don't have to be. And if you're not, this will work out great no matter what. But you got to be very light. You want to just barely, you don't want to hold it and push down pressure. Otherwise, it's very difficult to get those scratches out. Or at least what it is, it is difficult to get it in a very flat, consistent manner. Now, let me show you what that looks like. Now, here's an edge I did, not on this system, but freehand. And you'll see how consistent the, the edge is, how all the grit is going one direction, and it's nice and flat, if it will focus. We'll look at another one, then we'll take a look at a mirror edge. You see how flat the edge is and how all the grit is going one direction? Now that's kind of difficult to do on this system, on this, on that system. Now here is a 600 grit finish. It has been used since I sharpened it. Now we'll look at a mirror edge. Now, this is what I'm trying to basically compare it to. I'm trying to get the grip pattern nice and flat like that. I'm trying to get the grip pattern nice and flat like that, nice and consistent. Now, here's another. This is a mirror edge, but this one has been used since I sharpened it. But this is basically what I'm trying to get with that ceramic and it, in spots it is, in spots it's very mirror polished. In spots of the edge, when you use that system with the ceramic, you do get mirror polished, you know, parts. But in then other parts, it's splotchy. You still see the grit pattern, which is the problem in my opinion, because of the movement and because it needs a new another grit in between the 600 and the the ceramic now just using the diamonds is just fine if you don't want to to go to a polish and say if you just want to use the ceramic maybe to knock off the burr that works just fine but trying to get it nice and consistent like this and this was done on this system 
is very difficult. And you see it's still a little splotchy in places. This was not used with the ceramic at all. This is just the 600 grit at or finish. And you see it looks, I'll move this. And you see it does look pretty good considering it's just a 600 grit. But you can imagine the time it took to get that. Afterwards, I did use the stropping compound to get it a little bit more shinier to get uh, some of the scratching pattern out. So now, that's what I think will benefit this system massively, is if you have a good stropping compound, especially if you have, especially if you have the, um, uh, uh, progression. So if you have, like, say, a, a, I guess like maybe like a 0.6 micron or something like that down to um or 6 micron down to 0.25 micron if you have a stropping compound system that does that you can you can get it really nice and consistent because you can just strop basically some of the scratch pattern away but I do think this system is very good I do think that it will work for a lot of people you just got to be careful like i said with the movement and know that your stones aren't going to last a very long time you will get a, i i'm imagining that if you're not doing a bunch of reprofiling and you're just sharpening the same angle that's on the 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 the, the blade you could probably get about 50 sharpenings out of it altogether. which and then like that, you know, that's difficult to say too. I don't know if you'll get quite that many because it depends on your pressure, you know, um, the steel of the, the knives you're sharpening. So, you know, if you're sharpening all 20 CV and you're reprofiling, you're not going to get that many out of it. You know, you'll probably get 15 sharpenings out of it. Um, but in reality, that's well worth it already right there. Like I said, the benefits to me are it's fast it's um it's cheap uh it will sharpen your knife with no problem and you can sharpen any steel you can sharpen you know all the way up to any steel with this um the it's very very easy to use it can fit just about anywhere for storage the the angle holds nice and tight you don't have to worry about the angle falling on you aside from you know the movement but and then the downfalls are the movement right here the movement in the stone and you know the not having any other stones right at the moment um that would be a huge benefit if they had other stones um another uh downfall is the stones might not last very long if you're doing lots of reprofiling on, you know, certain steels. But there you guys go. I love you guys. Peace.